Each My MCERT module includes a section with questions based on key advances to the practice of emergency medicine. To prepare, we recommend you take time to review and print the current key advance materials prior to taking your modules. Now, let's take a closer look at the key advance based on the 2020 American Heart Association guidelines for neonatal resuscitation. Naomi is born by vaginal delivery at 34 weeks gestational age. She is not crying or breathing at birth and is floppy. After she is dried, warmed, and stimulated, assessment reveals absent breathing and a heart rate of 65. What should be the next steps in managing this newborn? Neonatal resuscitation refers to the steps undertaken to re-establish breathing and circulation of newborns. The goal is to help transition the newly born baby from fetal circulation to newborn circulation and respiration. To anticipate and be prepared for these cases, physicians must train individually and as teams. Step 1. Dry, warm, and stimulate is performed on every newborn and involves drying, warming, and stimulating the baby, including flicking on the soles of the feet and rubbing the back to trigger the first deep breath. Additional suctioning of the mouth and nose is recommended only if there are signs of airway obstruction. On further evaluation, if the newborn is apneic, gasping, or has a heart rate slower than 100, the baby is moved to step 2, ventilate. This involves immediate positive pressure ventilation by bag valve mask ventilation, usually at a rate of 40 to 60 breaths per minute, while placing the infant on a radiant warmer. The initial ventilating gas recommended for term infants is room air, which has approximately 21% oxygen. Up to 30% oxygen may be used for preterm infants. 100% oxygen is avoided, as it is harmful unless initial resuscitation measures do not result in spontaneous ventilation and a heart rate greater than 100. The telltale sign of effective ventilation is an increased heart rate. Listen over the heart, and if the heart rate increases to 100 or more and spontaneous respiration has begun, positive pressure ventilation is discontinued and the newborn is provided post-resuscitation care. However, if the heart rate stays below 100 despite adequate ventilation, the newborn is moved to step 3, evaluate heart rate. If the newborn's heart rate is between 60 to 100, ventilation is continued. If the heart rate is below 60, the newborn moves to step 4, resuscitate, and chest compressions are initiated, and then the airway is secured with intubation or supraglottic airway. If the heart rate does not increase to 60 or more, chest compressions are continued and the newborn remains intubated. Epinephrine is administered at a dose of 0.01 to 0.03 mg per kilogram through vascular access or through intraosseous or umbilical line every 3 to 5 minutes as appropriate. Resuscitation efforts may be discontinued if there is no heartbeat or respiratory effort after 20 minutes of effective resuscitation, including intubation and epinephrine. As a quick recap, neonatal resuscitation involves four steps. Step 1 includes drying, warming, and stimulating all newborns. Step 2 is providing positive pressure ventilation if there is respiratory distress or a heart rate below 100. Step 3 is evaluating the heart rate and continuing ventilation if it is between 60 and 100, and beginning chest compressions if it is below 60. Step 4 is resuscitating with chest compressions and administering epinephrine if the heart rate persists below 60. Post-resuscitation care is provided if at any time the heart rate rises above 100. In the given scenario, the emergency physician assesses the newborn to have no breathing and decreased heart rate despite initial resuscitation efforts of warming, drying, and stimulation. Per the current neonatal resuscitation guidelines, the newborn is started on positive pressure ventilation with a bag valve mask and ultimately is resuscitated. Listening over the heart reveals the newborn's heart rate has increased to greater than 100 and initial resuscitation efforts are ceased. The newborn is now breathing spontaneously and post-resuscitation care is initiated. Learn more about MyMCERT and key advances at www.abem.org.